Just a couple of days ago, we had a pretty major balance update to Hyperscape now that it is in open beta. So I figured let's go ahead and run through the patch notes and we'll give some thoughts and opinions on where the game's balance is now and what we can expect to see in the future from Ubisoft. Some of the most major pieces of feedback from the end of the closed beta and into the first couple of days of the open beta is that the Salvo and the Komodo in particular were too strong. They had too much pushback. They bounced you around too much when they were used indoors at point blank range, literally just shooting at your feet or very close to them. It was completely skillless and brainless to completely destroy teams 1v3, no monitor, just no aim, no brain. It was a little bit too much, and the community was rightfully complaining about a lot of those things. So luckily, in this most recent update, we do see some pretty hefty nerfs for the Salvo, a bit less so for the Komodo, uh, but at least it is a step in the right direction for sure, at least to alleviate some of the community, com community complaints as of late. First up, we have the facts of what changed with the Salvo. The rate of fire was reduced from 115 rounds per minute down to 90. The explosion area of effect was reduced from 4.5R down to 3R, which is basically a one-thirds reduction. The proximity radius of the grenade, so basically the, 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 the fatness of the grenade, or how thick it was, your ability to get direct hits with it, was reduced from 0.7R to 0.55R. So my assumption here is that R means radius, uh, what the numbers actually mean and what they translate to in terms of like meters or rather centimeters. Uh, I do not know the conversion. This is something that is specific to the engine of this game and I don't know the conversions for you offhand, but just take this as meaning that your AOE got a little bit smaller and your proximity of direct hits got a little bit smaller. So like the physical grenade size almost got smaller if you want to think about it that way. Your physical pushback was reduced by 45%, so you'll be bounced around significantly less when you are hit by one of these explosions or direct hits. Finally, your damage was increased from 22 at level 0 through 3 and 28 at level 4, all the way up to 27 at zero levels 0 through 3 and 34 at level 4. So a damage value of 34 will reduce your shots to kill by 1, which is pretty nice. 4 hits to kill. So, subjectively, your time to kill doesn't change all too much, assuming that you have perfect accuracy and you're able to hit all of your shots on your opponent. However, the gun has become much less spammy in close-range fights. It gives opponents just that little bit more time to readjust their aim after they have been bounced around by your first grenade to continue shooting at you somewhat accurately and damaging you back. Uh, it makes the grenade launcher a little bit less forgiving in those super like point-blank close-range fights. Uh, where you're inside a building that is spamming explosive guns left and right, but it makes it quite a bit harder to use in outdoor areas. You're more just using it for carpet bombing and spamming and random damage, uh, trying to bounce projectiles at people in cover, as opposed to using it as a mainline weapon like you would use it before. I don't know necessarily how good this is for the game. Uh, a lot of the footage that you're seeing here while I'm talking about the Salvo is actually from the pre-patch version of the Salvo, just because... I have found the gun so not fun to use post-patch that I, I just don't have any footage for it and I don't want to boot the game up and force myself to use it for an hour just to get like two minutes of good footage with it. So we're just going to use a little bit of older stuff just so you can see something. But realistically, I, I don't see people using the Salvo at all anymore. I think it's pretty much been nerfed out of the game for the most part. So giving it a little bit of something back in the next patch I think would be really, really good. Next up, let's list the Komodo changes. This is pretty much one of my favorite guns, and honestly, I like the direction that they are going with it. So, your point-blank damage with the Komodo has been significantly reduced. Basically, what this patch note means is that the closer you are to your opponent, the less damage you will do, which is identical to the Skybreaker. So, if you want to do max damage with the Skybreaker, you have to shoot from basically a specific distance away. It's not that far but it's basically just to say, hey, you can't just shoot this thing at your feet at point blank and AOE everyone around you for max damage. You have to be a little bit smarter uh, about how you use it to get max effectiveness out of it. So they've taken that mechanic and applied it to the Komodo as well. But while applying that change, they also have buffed the damage again. So it's now dealing 25 damage uh, per hit up to 30 when you get it to level 4, which is up from its old 22 slash 28. So that is pretty, pretty good. 
The explosion AoE has also been reduced from 2.5R down to 1.5R, which is roughly a 40% uh, reduction if my uh, <laughs> mental math is not completely wrong. So, honestly speaking, I don't really notice the change in explosion AoE personally, but that might just be because I am a Quake player, I'm used to uh, rocket launcher-esque weapons like this, so it feels very natural for me to use and get good shots on people with. So when I am missing shots, it does feel like, yeah, I missed, as opposed to, man, that nerf sucks. But that's just my personal opinion. Your mileage will almost certainly vary depending on how familiar you are with guns like this from games like Quake or UT or similar. What I really, really love about this thing, though, is that when you get it to level 4, you are doing exactly enough damage for a four-shot kill. So if you're able to get someone on a juggle, so you shoot their feet, you bounce them in the air, you get a couple of air shots, and then they land, and you get another shot in their feet, or, you know, whatever the, the permutation ends up being, four-shot kills of this thing feel so, so nice. In addition, you'll see a couple of really long-range air shots I'm hitting on people where I'm just getting their... They're slamming away or teleporting away or whatever movement they're doing, and able just to flick up in the air, take one shot, get a direct hit, finish off a kill feels really really nice coming from again from a game like quake so this is absolutely one of the best feeling guns in the game for me it's really really fun and uh, i think the changes are overall really good it makes the gun less spammy less just uh rewarding of people with you know mediocre aim spamming it at point blank and rewards people who can aim it well um, and gives you quite a lot of damage back the ammo economy is still not amazing. This is one of the few guns I feel like I run out of ammo with very, very regularly. Uh, but that's probably for the best just due to how powerful it is. So overall, I really like the state of Komodo's balance right now. I don't know if the community necessarily agrees, but I personally am having a lot of fun with the damage output I'm able to achieve with it. Next up, there is a bug fix for the Hexfire, which is that big minigun affecting controller users specifically. Basically, the developers have found a bug which caused the hex fire to be a little bit too good with aim assist and tracking targets a little bit too well, especially when they're using abilities like teleport and going straight up and your aim would just be completely locked onto them and you would never miss despite the fact that you would have an inhuman movement speed and reaction time and just tracking this thing. It's almost like you're using an actual aimbot. So that has been patched and removed and the hex fire should be a bit more balanced for controller players. It's still my opinion that the Hexfire may be just a little bit too underpowered. Uh, I think that it was OP at launch, and it was easily the best gun in the game. But between the Harpy SMG being added and, well, just, just like the damage change that did happen to this thing, as well as the accuracy nerf, overall the Hexfire just feels very lackluster, and it's not a weapon that I ever really want to have. Unless I'm dropping hot and it's the only thing I can pick up because at least I get 150 bullets before needing to reload. And if I don't find any ammo boxes off my spawn, 150 bullets is a really, really big deal when compared to something like a Komodo with four shots or a Skybreaker with one shot. You know, it, it's just, th there is a lot of value there. But outside of those hot drops, I, I, I really struggle to justify ever taking a hex fire. So this uh, aim assist fix is good. But hopefully we see some kind of uh, some kind of balance change to the Hexfire in the future, or maybe even just a weapon retirement in favor of the Harpy, because I, I really don't see a reason for the minigun to exist in its current state. Next up, we finally have some buffs to the reveal hack. Thank you, devs, for finally doing something for this ability. It is still pretty much bottom tier. It is still something that you are absolutely not taking to endgame. There are way better options 99% of the time, but if you happen to spawn hot and you just happen to drop on a gold reveal, you can absolutely make some good use out of it until you find something better. So, the detection range of reveal has been increased to 60 meters, up from the old 50 meters. Not really all that much, but hey, at least it's something. The detection angle has also been increased up to 50 degrees from the old 40 degrees. My very first time using reveal, that was the first thing I thought in my head was, wow, this is a very small AoE. Like, the, the angle of the cone that I'm shooting out is very small. And I would have expected it to be much, much bigger. So, I'm glad we got something for it. Hopefully, they'll do uh, even more in a future balance update, because I think the ability could absolutely use it. 
Next up, we have a nerf to the mine. This is, in my opinion, one of the most overpowered abilities in the game after they gave it that major buff uh, one or two patches ago. I really thought the mine was fine in its launch power state, and I don't really agree with the decision to buff it like they did. Um, but mines are rampant now, and they're very, very strong. So I'm really happy to see any nerf for it. I don't think it's enough, but whatever. So first up, for the mine, that projectile's HP has been reduced to 75, down from 90. So previously a mine would take nearly as much damage as a player would before you would kill it. And when you do kill it, it still explodes as per normal. So if it's close enough to you, you're taking that full, full damage from it, which has always been incredibly high. So giving it less HP is very helpful. It's going to do less damage on average when you're trying to shoot it and just get it away from you. But... Uh, it's still really, really strong, especially if you spawn it, like, pretty much directly on top of an opponent. There's almost nothing they can do about it unless they have a teleport or slam, which, big shocker, is pretty much the most powerful hacks in the game anyways. And they're always going to have those anyways, which I guess is good for mind balance, but meh. The other change we have here is that your projectile acceleration was reduced to 6 down from a value of 8. So, again, we don't really know what this actually means, but it should be accelerating quite a bit more slowly now, and which means it should be a little bit less likely to actually find perks on a target, especially one that is actively running away, turning corners, using abilities. Um, it should be a little less likely to actually kill you now, but it's still really, really strong. I, I still think the ability could use yet another, uh, another nerf, but uh, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you all think down below about this one because I've seen some differing opinions and people have been really enjoying the mine update, but maybe it's just people that kind of need the mine to do damage and I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to speculate too, too hard about it, but it's my opinion that it's probably just a bit too strong. Next down, there have been some nerfs to the wall ability. So the cooldown has been increased by about two seconds across the board at every upgrade level. So it will be a little bit slower to uh, come back once you use it. The lifetime duration of the wall has also been reduced significantly. It used to last for two minutes, and now walls will last for only 25 seconds. This should be very, very helpful with some of those end game strategies involving using teleport and wall to basically pick up the crown, teleport straight up, wall, teleport straight up, wall, teleport straight up, wall, and basically just ascend into orbit with these two abilities and make it incredibly hard for enemy teams to actually kill you and deal with you. Moving on to some of the more meta hacks. We have changes to Shockwave, Slam, and Armor. So first up we have Shockwave. The cooldown has been increased by one second across the board to match other fast hacks, uh, what is what they're calling it. So I, I don't know like off the top of my head what those other fast hacks actually are, Shockwave seems to be cooling down a couple of seconds more quickly than something like Slam or Teleport. So I don't know what the Fast Hacks category actually entails. It might just be things like Reveal um, or Mine, but beyond that, I'm not entirely sure. I do feel that Shockwave is one of the most powerful hacks in the game, especially when paired with another movement ability like Slam or Teleport. If you have something like a level 4 sniper and you hit someone in the body for 80, you can then immediately press your shockwave button to deal another 30 to them and leave them at pretty much 0 HP for you just to mop up with whatever other gun you have. Uh, if you slam onto somebody, once you pop them up in the air, you can immediately shockwave them to also keep them in the air for even longer, just juggling them and dealing, what, 50 plus 30 damage, so 80 damage just on abilities alone. You only need to actually aim at them for 40 damage worth of shots, like... That's, that's a nothing. So, I don't know. Shockwave, I think, is perhaps symptomatic of a larger problem in this game that I've been noticing lately, where damage-dealing abilities are just, in general, I feel too strong and doing too much and reducing too much of the aim and positioning skill from the game. Uh, and basically, you're just making super abilities, where they give you both mobility and damage, which are two of the most important things to get out of abilities, uh, on really short cooldowns, and I just don't know how I feel about stuff like that. So, the Shockwave nerf here is good. I really hope to see a universal nerf to all abilities that deal damage, which would be Slam, and Shockwave, and Mine. If there's others, I'm just not 
really thinking of them, but you know, anything like that I think should be brought down, uh, maybe in some future updates. As for Slam, yet again, the cooldown of this thing has been nerfed. It's basically going to take two seconds longer to cool down at all upgrade levels. So at max upgrade level, it's going to be a seven second cooldown up from the old five seconds. Finally, we have Armor, whose duration was decreased to five seconds from the old six seconds. So juggling between Armor and Slam, Armor and Invisibility, Armor and Teleport, things like that, it's just been really harrowing trying to chase people down and actually finish them off when they're the last one surviving in their team it takes literally minutes to chase people down sometimes and it's just not very fun and engaging you know the fun kind of lasts for about 30 seconds of the chase and then it gets to the point where it's like okay i just don't even want to chase anymore go ahead and res your teammates and we'll fight again later because i can't be bothered to keep chasing you and risking a third fourth and fifth party right now so is that good for the game or not i'm I'm not entirely sure. Right now, it feels a little bit frustrating and annoying, but perhaps that's the kind of thing that needs to be in the game uh, just to keep the uh, the team deathmatch feel kind of rolling and, and prevent people from just thirsting kills uh, at, all, at all points in time. So let me know again what you guys think about this one as well, because I'm not completely uh, decided on my opinions. I have not fully formed my opinions on this one. It, the, the armor slam, armor teleport, armor invisibility stuff frustrates me, but... Maybe it should still be there regardless. I'm not really sure. And finally, we have some overall game changes. So the ring, or what they call in this game, the sector, um, the damage you take from being outside or I guess in, you know, in the sector or in the, 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 the no man's land, whatever you want to call it, the damage has been increased pretty significantly while you're out there. If you take more than three or four ticks of damage, it just keeps ramping up and ramping up and ramping up. And it gets to the point now where, I mean, it very, very honestly will kill you. Like, through through your healing abilities, through your movement abilities, like, if you don't have armor plus heal trying to run through it, you are pretty well guaranteed to die, in my opinion, um, if you're trying to make a long run through the zone. So, that is honestly good for the game. It especially helps when you get to final uh, final zone and you have the crown spawning, where the, the damage yet again ramps up uh, in the crown phase. It, it's it's honestly very, very good for the game. It prevents a lot of those degenerate strategies where you run way, way outside of the sector uh, just in order to survive with the crown and uh, potentially get behind some kind of piece of cover that you cannot be shot through, and then you're just basically invincible and you're guaranteed a win. All those cheesy strategies are pretty much out of the game, which is really really good. There's also been another nerf to crown bearers where your hack cooldown penalty is increased from 33% to 50%. So it takes you even longer for abilities to cool down when you have the crown, making it harder to run away indefinitely. And if you want to hold the crown and try to win that way, you have to think a little bit more critically about it, position a little bit better with your team and uh, work together a little bit more as opposed to just straight up running really, really hard for 45 seconds and being unkillable. Anyways, everyone, that'll do it for these patch notes. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying Hyperscape. We'll see you again soon. Take care.